Dancing has always been a part of my life in general. My great grand, my grandparents, my great grandparents, you know, taught me cha cha and rock and roll at parties, you know, Christmas time, and and my mom did social dancing as well. So it's always something. It was always a passion. It was clear we loved music, we loved dancing, but it was only when I was around 15 years old that I actually started training and dance. Um, before then, we didn't really, we weren't really financially um, in a position to be able to just take some, you know, extra activities outside of school. Um, so yeah, I started when I was 15 and, uh, you know, never stopped since. <laughs> Uh, dance room it, it was an outlet it was a you know a fun hobby that I wanted to keep pushing and pushing without really knowing what I was getting into to be honest um, you know I st started taking classes and training and then all of a sudden I was part of a hip-hop team and we went to a world hip-hop championships and, and won gold and I was like you know it was just kind of like one step after the next oh you can compete great I didn't know um, you know and then all of a sudden um, I started going to dance conventions which are like weekend long you know uh, ways to train and I, it started sort of I started connecting the dots as to like okay you can actually make a career out of it I could get paid for doing what I love and and so that kind of came in slowly but surely into my mind and so this whole time I was really in school um, I went to university for physical therapy um, but I quit halfway through when really my heart was like divided I was missing out on auditions and I knew I wanted to do that more than what I was doing at the moment so I decided to to stop school and just jump, you know, 100% into dance, and uh, yeah, I'm happy I did that. I made that decision. <laughs> I've been professionally dancing for the past 15 years or so, so it's it's been a moment. My first sort of aha moment uh, was um, in Montreal after quitting university. I think about maybe a year later or so, I ended up um, auditioning for this big choreographer out here, Geneviève Dorian Coupal, who does, you know, every show possible. Now she works with Cirque a lot and she's just so wonderful. Um, and I really wanted to just get on her radar, hoping that she could start hiring me. So I went to this audition and it was for this um, Montreal slash Egyptian singer. Her name is Chantal Chamandi. Um, and it was for this big, big show production, like this two hour concert she wanted to do at the base of the pyramid in Egypt. And I got the, I got the, the yes, I was asked to do that. And so Egypt was like my first big trip, you know, um, over the ocean and it was just like such a huge like okay at that point I was like I quit school for a good reason this is this is my workout this is good <laughs> then yeah fast forward to you know multiple years here in Montreal where I got to you know perform on big stages and TV shows and you know with different artists Rachel Badouri, Marie May, um, René Simard, uh, Véronique Cloutier, a bunch of people here um, and then I auditioned for So You Think You Dance Canada when that was a thing and I was part of season two which was super fun and just like the perfect diving board into like, okay, what can I do next? Let's go to Los Angeles. Cause I made a lot of connections. It was what I needed to kind of prove, you know, to help me out with my O1 visa process. Um, so then I moved to Los Angeles when I was, uh, when I was 26. And it was quite the shock because it's starting kind of like all over again. I had made a name for myself in Montreal. I'm kind of older compared to most, you know, 17, 18 year olds that I'm auditioning with in LA. Uh, but it was definitely worthwhile, you know, from there I just started booking with different artists and doing different award shows and dancing for Yeah, for the you know, the singers that I would listen to on the radio here in Montreal So it was pretty surreal to be doing that My number one dream was to tour the world with Beyonce, which I got to do in 2013-14 um, And then work with her after that as well, but yeah, she's just incredible so to me, family is super important. It's like number one. Um, and it was very important for me to, even if I was to move to Los Angeles, uh, I was gonna come back, you know, multiple times a year to come and spend some time with my family. It was always really short trips at first, to be honest. There was this sort of pressure that you put on yourself as a dancer, especially when you move to a new city or a new country where you don't wanna miss out. You're scared of missing out. If I leave for a week or two, if I accept a job back in Montreal, then what audition or what call did I miss in Los Angeles? For me, it was important to really focus, and then once I could say I made it in Los Angeles, then you know I kind of took more jobs in Montreal. I came back two years ago to judge on Danse pour gagner, and I, you know, I would say yes to these little jobs here and there. It's always nice to come back home. The way that I connect the most with Montreal is I come back and teach workshops for dancers here. 
I want to be, you know, I want it to be a full circle where I had my mentors here in Canada that really helped me with my career. So now me, me being able to give back and come back and say, you know, here are the things that I did and here's what's going to help you physically, mentally, as a dancer, as a person. Um, so I try to, uh, so I come back every year and teach a bunch of master classes and try to connect with, uh, with mentees. The self-serving industry can be really harsh when you know when you start uh, affiliating who am I with the jobs that I that I book you know so often dancers will see each other in LA or even here in Montreal and instead of like hey how are you doing how's your heart how's life it's so what have you worked on lately you know that's a question that comes back a lot so all of a sudden you start you know putting your worth with am I booking a job and that could be really hard mentally if there was nothing coming up. Um, so I think it's super important to, to, I mean, there's so many things. One, I think putting your energy in other things than just dance. As a dancer, even though your main focus is that, like what are your other hobbies or friendships or you know things that you wanna do for yourself? I love nature so much. I love camping. I'm a big fan of road trips. So if you were to see my Instagram feed, it, that's all it is. It's like road trip, van life, tiny houses. If you have some other sort of, you know, resources that you can go to that make you happy, I think that's super important to just what I call your self-love bucket. You want to fill that up to feel good. The quicker you can understand that it's not personal, the better you'll do. And I know that's hard to say, especially in the moment, but as a dancer, you're auditioning you know, sometimes you're auditioning every day, every second day, every week, and you give it your all, you've spent hours getting ready, you show up over there, and then they're like, nope, you're not it. So that rejection after, you know, one after the next can be really hard. You know, you start questioning yourself, you're wondering if you're enough, if you could have done differently. And as long as you remember, this is not personal. You could have been amazing, but your hair is red and the artist has red hair. There's so many factors that come in, that you know, as soon as you you know you feel yourself sort of like tripping and qu wondering and questioning yourself, just remember it's not personal. If that door closes, another one will open for you. Women were often half naked on stage. We have these tiny little costumes, and you know your cheeks are out or, or your stomach is out. So I've definitely felt that pressure, you know, over and over again to you know, am I, is my weight okay? Am I toned enough? Am I you know personally? I felt very white for so many years. I just wanted to look tanned. I wanted to be a little darker. I would go in tanning beds, which didn't work. Clearly, I'm so white I'd burn. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I had to get over that and start just loving who I am as I am because everyone is unique and we all have something very special to offer. And once you focus on that, like, okay, well, there is no two of me. And that means super pale and all, I'm coming in and I've got something to offer. I came out um, publicly about my sexual uh, abuse as a child about two years ago, I think it was. And um, if you, you know, if we were to, you know, see each other a lot and we were friends, I was open to, it wasn't something that I was uh, embarrassed about. I could kind of open up about it if it was the right tone, obviously, in terms of conversation. But there's, there's a, there's, it's like a big jump to all of a sudden openly, like on social media, let me announce it to everybody. And the reason why I had to think about it for years, to be honest, um, I didn't feel, it didn't feel right at first. I wanted to do a lot of work on myself and, and, and see a therapist and just get better. I went through, you know, times of depression and, and, and yeah, dark times as well. And so I had a lot of work to do, which, you know, that is forever ongoing. We always have some work to do. Um, but two years ago, I decided to announce it publicly because I wanted to start making more connections with organization, nonprofits, um, you know, people that you can call to that that'll help um, victims of sexual abuse. And and if I don't speak up on it, then who's going to approach me and be like, by the way, I'm an organization that can help. If I'm silent, then I, I'm not attracting those people into my life. So that was part of why I'm like, I'm going to open up one to be able to connect with the right people so that I can, I can educate myself better. I can find out more resources and share those to other people. And then the other reason why was just to kind of, you know, show to people that they're not alone. Whoever is going through this or has a similar story, here's mine. Let's open up. Let's connect. I want you to know that you're not alone and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, here are the steps that I took. They're personal to me, but you know, I want to help as, as much as I can. Unfortunately, it happens way too much. And so I think opening up about it um, is giving someone else permission to open about it. I think they see how, okay, well, if, if she can do it, then I can do it. 
and you have to start opening up in order to heal. I think people um, might be afraid to open up or, 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 or look back at that situation or that trauma um, for so many reasons. I think, you know, the, the, the shame, you know, the could I have done differently? Did I attract that? Is it my fault? So there's all of that, you know, uh, as a victim. Then there's, you know, what other people are going to think. Um, am I going to be judged? Am I going to be looked at as I'm dirty, I'm different, I'm, I'm damaged? We, we push it and we, you know, bury it so deep down thinking, if it's deep enough, I will forget and I will move past it. But I don't think it ever goes away if you don't face that pain. You have to face that pain to get to the other side, to start healing. Um, so I think that's, that's a, a big, you know, stop in, for a lot of, of victims. They won't want to go there because it's painful. And I know it's painful, but if anyone's listening right now and they're going through it and if they had a similar trauma, it is worth going through that pain and, 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 and facing it once and for all and getting the proper help to overcome because it's kind of um, stealing a part of you. It's, it's, it's stolen of, you know, whatever that moment was. Maybe it was your first time, maybe you were a child, maybe, you know, and, and you, you get to take your power back when you face it and you say, you know what, this is not okay. I wanna move past that and it wasn't my fault. Um, and you know, you take all the right steps to properly heal. I think it's super important.